Hello, welcome to Maths with Jay. In this question, we've been given a second order linear differential equation which has got constant coefficients. There are two parts to the question. In the first part, we've been asked to solve for x, so we're going to find x in terms of t. And in the second part, we're going to be finding the maximum value of x. So in this video, we're going to be looking at part a. Now there are two parts to the solution here. So what we're going to do is start off by writing down the complementary equation and solving this equation to start with. So, so far this looks the same as the equation that we've been given. The difference is going to be that instead of the right hand side that we've been given in the question, we're just going to write zero. So this is the complementary equation. And from this, we can write down the auxiliary equation. So that's going to be m squared plus 5m plus 6 equals 0. And we're going to be able to use the solutions to this equation to solve the complementary equation. So we can see that this can be factorised So to get uh, a product of 6 and a sum of 5, we must have 2 and 3. So that we've got that m is either going to be minus 2 or minus 3. So we've got real distinct roots. So we can say that the complementary function is... So because it's the complementary function, I'm going to put cf here. So the x is going to be some constant, which we'll have to find, times e to the power of, now one of our solutions will come in here, so minus 2t, so that's a e to the minus 2t, where a is a constant, and then the other constant we'll call b, and this is where we'll have our other root, which was minus 3, so that's going to be minus 3t. So the solutions to the auxiliary equation are the coefficients of the t's in the powers of e here. So you'll remember I said that the solution is in two parts. So this is one part. So let's just put that to one side. So now we're looking for the second part of the solution. And now we need to look at the right hand side of the given equation. So that's 2e to the minus t. So what we're looking for here is a particular integral. So we're looking for something which, when we differentiate it, we're going to get a multiple of e to the minus t. Because in fact, we're going to differentiate it twice. And each time we differentiate, we're still going to get a multiple of e to the minus t. So this is relatively straightforward because we know that when we differentiate e to the minus t, we get a multiple of e to the minus t. So that means we know that x is a constant, so let's call that lambda, times e to the minus t. So now all we need to do is to differentiate that a couple of times, put it into the original equation, and work out what lambda is going to be. So let's work out dx by dt. So lambda is just a constant. When we differentiate e to the minus t, we get minus e to the minus t. So we're going to get minus lambda e to the minus t. So that when we differentiate again to find the second derivative, then we're going to multiply the previous answer by negative 1. So that's going to give us lambda e to the minus t. So that's going to give us... So what I'm doing here is writing down the left-hand side of the equation that we started with. And then we're going to substitute in the three values, including the, the lambdas. So that's going to be equal to... Now what we could do, because we can see that everything is going to be a multiple of lambda e to the minus t, we could start off by taking that outside a bracket, couldn't we, and make life a bit simpler. So, 
If we're starting at the left hand side, the second derivative, well that's just the same as what we've already got outside the bracket, so that's just going to be 1 because the d 2 x by dt squared is lambda e to the minus t. Then we've got plus 5 times dx by dt, so that's 5 times negative lambda times e to the minus t, so that's going to have give us minus 5 times lambda e to the minus t, and then 6 times x, well that's 6 lots of lambda e to the minus t, so that's plus 6. So that's just writing down the left hand side of the equation, and the right hand side is 2e to the minus t. So combining together the 1, negative 5 and 6, that's going to give us 2, so the left hand side is 2 lambda e to the minus t, so that's equal to 2 e to the minus t. So looking at the coefficients of e to the minus t, we've got the 2 lambda is 2, in other words, lambda is 1. So now we can write down the uh, particular integral that we've been finding here. So because we know what lambda is, the particular integral, so we'll put a little pi for particular integral here, and that's going to be 1 times e to the minus t, in other words, e to the minus t. So let's just put that to one side, and then we can combine these two answers into the final answer to part a. So now we've done the hard work, we can just write down what uh, the solution is. So the solution is the complementary function and particular integral so that's equal to a e to the minus 2t plus b e to the minus 3t and then e to the minus t So we can see that we've got two constants that we haven't yet found. But we have been given some initial information. In the second line of the question, we've been given that x equals 0 and dx by dt is 2 at t equals 0. So using that information will enable us to find a and b. So we know that when t is 0, then x is 0. So let's use that first of all. So x is 0, and that's equal to a times e to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so that's equal to a. And then we're going to add b and e to the 0 again. That's going to be 1. So it's going to be easier if we write this as a plus b equals minus 1. And then looking at the second condition, well, we need to have dx by dt for that, don't we? So let's work out what that's going to be. So differentiating x, we're going to get minus 2a e to the minus 2t, minus 3b e to the minus 3t, and minus e to the minus t. So now we can use the other initial condition, which is that when t is zero, dx by dt, and be careful here, because often you get initial conditions where everything is zero, but here dx by dt is two. So we have got that two is equal to minus two a, minus three b, minus 1. So again it's going to be simpler if we have the a's and b's on one side and constants on the other and let's have the coefficients of a and b positive so we'll have 2a plus 3b and what's that going to be? That's going to be negative 3 isn't it? Yes. Okay, so let's number our equations. So we'll have that as number one and that as number two. So if we multiply the first one by two, then that will give us 2a plus 2b is minus two. 
And if we call that 3, then we can combine equations 2 and 3 together to eliminate a, can't we? So let's just uh, do that. So let's work out what 2 subtract 3 is going to be. So the 2a minus 2a gets rid of the 2a. 3b minus 2b is b. And then negative 3 subtract negative 2. So that's going to be negative 1. And then substituting that in equation 1 will give us that a is 0. So let's do that. So substitute b in 1. And that gives us that a is 0. So that gives us our x. So a is 0. So a e to the minus 2t is going to disappear. b is negative 1. So we've got minus e to the minus 3t. And then we already had the plus e to the minus t. So that's the solution. And you might like to check that. So you could differentiate that and check that when t is 0, that x is 0 and that dx by dt is 2.